Most troopers in Infinity function as individual operators. Infinity does have rules for squads operating in unison, but they work quite a bit differently than most other wargames. In this video, I'm going to give you a rules explanation as well as some tips and tricks for engaging with fire teams. In real life, a fire team is a subunit of an infantry squad. A fire team is 3 to 5 members, and there are 2 or 3 fire teams in a squad of infantry. This structure allows for flexibility. One team can provide cover for another while maneuvering. Fire teams with strong cohesion know how to work together as a unit, providing a synergistic effect. If one person in the team is firing, the others spot enemies, cover in the rear, and provide ammunition. This allows the active shooter greater capacity for effective fire. Simply put, you can get more done if you have friends you trust backing you up. Fire teams let you spend a single, regular order on your turn to activate a team of 2 to 5 troopers. They also enjoy a set of passive bonuses in the active and reactive turns. Troopers can only be part of one fire team at a time. They all have to be within 8 inch coherency of the team leader at the start and end of every order. Every time you spend an order on a fire team, you can change the team leader. Duos can only have two members and are available in every army. Haris is a given name that means Guardian Angel in Arabic. Originally, only Kapul Kalki had access to this special three-man Haris teams, hence the name. Core fire teams can have up to five members. During the deployment phase, you can form a fire team by placing a team leader token next to a trooper that meets the requirements. When you do so, make sure to check the coherency of the team and declare which members are part of the team. You can also form one during the game. On your active turn, spend a command token and place a team leader token in the same way. Legal fire teams are dictated by an army's fire teams chart. You can find it on the free Infinity Army app and by tapping here. You can also find it on the Army web app by clicking here. Finally, I'm linking a plain text PDF that has a list of the fire teams, although it was created in March 2022, so it might be out of date by the time you're watching this video. This video is by no means exhaustive. I encourage you to take a quick look at the rulebook. Use this as an overview, not a replacement. Every sectorial and army has different fire team options. At the top, it tells you how many fire teams of each type you can have active at a given time. In sectorial armies like Starmata, you can have any number of duos. Generic armies can only take duos and can't take the larger, more powerful fire teams. Some factions, like Imperial Service or Toha, have other requirements and options. Toha, for example, can take any number of special three-man teams. Take a look at all your options. When you create a Crusade fire team, you can make it a Harris and or a Core. If you have enough legal miniatures for it, you could have a fire team Harris as well as a fire team Core of Knight Hospitallers. Fire teams have a minimum and maximum number of troopers allowed. Minimum one means that no matter what, if you want a Celestial Guard fire team, you have to have at least one Celestial Guard. Any of those troopers can be the leader at any given time, but if that required trooper is neutralized, the team ceases to exist. There are thematic reasons for it. That Celestial Guard may have been a political officer or liaison in charge of the team, and without them, they don't have the appropriate supervision. I would like you there as an advisor. If you see an asterisk in the minimum column, that means that when you create a fire team of this type, in this case, a Hassassin Bahram fire team, you must have at least one trooper with the asterisk. You could have a Lasik and two wildcard Asawira. You could have five Muyibs. You could have one Govad and two Lasik. They're all fine. Some profiles display FTO or fire team option next to their name. That means you can have them join the team as well. The Yasbir FTO could join any of the team options I just mentioned, but the version with Holo Projector and Surprise Attack could not join any fire teams at all. Wild cards can be part of any fire teams you like. The Max column shows the maximum number of troopers of that unit that can be included per fire team. Some wild cards may also be listed in specific fire teams. For example, the Shangjie Invincibles. The Shangjie are the premier unit in the Yujin ground forces. They can form their own elite units, but any team in the Empire would be happy to have one fighting by their side. So what do you get for all this? Two big features. The first is order efficiency, and the second are the fire team bonuses. Order efficiency means you get to activate up to five troopers for just one order. Any skill you declare, the entire team declares. Here are the details. To use a team in the active turn and choose a leader for the fire team. It can be the current leader, or it can be a new leader, up to you. After you spend the order, check for coherency to make sure everyone is within 8 inches of the leader. You don't have to measure every single time, you can generally eyeball it. 
these two are clearly within 8 inches of the leader. If the skill is Reset, or any skill with a movement label, those being Climb, Dodge, Jump, or Move, then every member of the team performs that skill. If any of them don't meet the requirements of that skill, for example, if one trooper wants to climb, but not all of them can do so, then the ones who can't perform the skill simply idle. If it's any other skill, then only the leader performs it. The rest of the team provides various bonuses to the leader's action. If a team wants to move plus shoot, then everyone performs move because it has the movement label, but only the leader is going to use BS attack because it doesn't have that movement label. So here's one of the great things about fire teams. No matter how many of them trigger arrows, each enemy trooper only gets one reaction against one target in that team. In fiction, everyone is providing support to the leader. That leader might be blasting away with a spitfire, while the rest of the team provides cover, watches their back, and makes callouts. This support continues in the reactive turn, as well. That support comes in the form of... Fire teams enjoy passive bonuses that apply to both active and reactive turns. If your fire team has three members, then in the active turn, the leader gets plus one burst when using BS weapons and throwing weapons. That means you can chuck two grenades or shoot a combi rifle four times. Plus one burst, pretty cool stuff. More exciting on low burst weapons. Imagine two shots with a missile launcher or three shots with a sniper rifle. In the reactive turn, every member of the fire team gets that plus one bonus. If you have four members, then everyone in the team gets the sixth sense special skill. Sixth sense is great. It gives everyone a 360 field of view, basically. They ignore surprise attacks, they don't have dodge penalties, all kinds of great stuff. If a team has five members, they get an additional plus one modifier to their BS attack rolls. There is a problem, though. Fire teams are inflexible compared to individual troopers. If at any point a trooper declares an arrow that's different from the rest of the team, then that trooper leaves the team instantly, weakening the team as a whole. If you want, Use the chapter tools in the description to learn more about that, and then come back here. Now it's time for a small but notable change from older editions, the composition bonuses. Let's look back at those fireteam lists. You'll notice the second column. These only apply when every member of the team is from the same unit, or has a matching keyword for that unit. A couple of British Army regulars are going to operate well together, but they might not have the synergistic effect if they're paired with a Royal Marine. This guy isn't part of the club, he has gloves! If the fire team is composed entirely of troopers from the same unit, or that keyword, they get extra bonuses. All of these stack with the normal fire team bonuses. Three Ghulam get an additional plus three to their discover rolls. Four Ghulam get an extra plus one to their BS attacks. Five Ghulam get another plus one to their BS attacks. That would mean a five-man Ghulam team in Rama Task Force would get plus three BS, plus one burst, sixth sense, and plus three to discover. This Jayadan over here isn't a Ghulam, but it has the Ghulam keyword, so the fire team still gets all those juicy composition bonuses. This was done as a reaction to the old rules. Fire teams would often be one elite shooter backed up by four cheap units. It made wild cards like the Kamao Sniper very dominant, and many loadouts in the line infantry simply never saw play. Now, the fire team bonuses are still good, so you can still play with a team of four cheap guys supporting one elite trooper. However, you have more incentives to play with a homogenous fire team of three to five of the same unit. Fire teams are automatically cancelled and stop existing if any of the following happens. Number one, the leader leaves the team by declaring an arrow that's different from the rest of the team. I mentioned that earlier. The leader becomes isolated or any null state like unconscious. The charge is down! What do we do? The fire team is down to just one trooper. A player is in retreat. A player creates a new team of the same type that exceeds the allowed number of teams. If that happens, cancel the old team. Players can also cancel fire teams for free in the active or reactive turns between order declarations. Individual troopers leave fire teams the moment that any of the following things happen. A trooper is isolated or unconscious. If a trooper is out of coherency at the start or end of an order. If the trooper is irregular and uses its irregular order. A loss of lieutenant makes everyone irregular, so that's bad. The trooper enters marker state like camouflage or holo echo. The trooper enters suppressive fire state. Troopers also leave suppressive fire mode if they join a team. The trooper changes combat groups. Here's a big one. 
if a trooper declares an arrow that's different from the other fireteam members' arrows. For example, you have four Celestial Guard and a Deva in a team. A Yuan Yuan runs up and hits all of them with a chain rifle. If three of them dodge and two of them shoot, then the two who declared BS attack as their arrow leave the team the second they declare shoot. Of course, they can all declare the same arrow, but they use different tools to do it. This team of Drews can all use different weapons against that same Yuan Yuan. The two in the front can declare BS attack with their chain colts. The two in the back can use BS attack with their viral pistols. Similarly, if you have several hackers, they can all declare hacking attack with different programs. Two out of these models are all hackers. If the target gets close, one can use Spotlight while the other one can use Oblivion, and does nothing rather than leaving the team. While in a fire team, the frenzy and impetuous skills of a trooper are not applied. You've got friends to protect, you can't go running off to kill in close combat. If a trooper leaves a fire team, those skills return. They apply again in whatever state they were in when they join the team. On a similar note, the only way to declare Berserk in a fire team is for the leader to declare it. Only the leader berserks. Everyone else watches in stunned silence. Anyone in a vehicle can dismount from their vehicle and use their new profile without leaving the team. This means units and motorcycles and tags can get out and stay coherent. At the start of your turn, any trooper who left a fire team last turn can automatically rejoin it if they are in coherency with a fire team leader during the tactical phase. It's all right, Jose. You were scared and you dodged while we all shot. No hard feelings. Get back in here, buddy. If multiple troopers from a team are engaged in close combat, only the fire team leader actually makes the close combat roll. Remember that every allied trooper engaged with the target provides a bonus burst to the CC attack. That's just how close combat normally works. In the reactive turn, if the fire team leader is not engaged in that melee, then the player chooses one of the fire teamsters that is engaged to perform the CC roll. Those are pretty much all the fire team rules, including the new changes. I have some tips for new players who want to utilize fire teams well. First, make sure your fire team is well rounded. Try and have different units that can fight at different ranges. For example, you can have Hassassin Muyibs with a Spitfire for a medium range, and one with a shotgun for close range, and maybe a doctor to keep them both alive and well. Don't take random guys just to bulk up a fire team. The bonus for four troopers is good, as is the bonus for three. If you don't feel confident, there's no need to force it all the way up to five. Start with three-man fire teams and learn the ropes with them. There's nothing wrong with having two three-man teams. No reason you have to go with a big expensive core if you don't think you're going to get use out of it. Practice imagining where each model is going to be on the board before declaring move. When a trooper moves, it turns into a Tron light cycle. It exists in a big long bar during its movement. As such, you open yourself up to a really terrible template. Whenever you spend an order, you activate all members of the fire team. Even if they aren't moving or shooting, they're still declaring idle, which generates arrows. As such, your opponent might get an arrow on a non-leader. If you can, try to only expose one guy at a time, the leader. Don't over-rely on them. Don't make them your entire strategy. Fire teams enhance your game, but they're not going to win the game on their own. There's a reason why people play generic armies, and they play them well. That flexibility is unmatched compared to big fire teams, and you should never feel obligated to play a sectorial. It can be easier, and some would argue they're still more powerful than fire teams. If you're having trouble dealing with fire teams, I've got three quick tips too. Try to kill fire teams on your active turn. Yes, when they're reacting, they're all going to have bonuses, but even with that burst bonus, they're still just soldiers. Use a weapon with very high burst, like a heavy machine gun, and try and take them down one at a time. Most fire team members are going to be relatively cheap line troops, or extremely expensive heavy troops. Line troopers like Fusiliers or Junxie have very low physique scores, we're talking 11 or less. Use grenades and mines to hit multiple targets at once. One of the best ways to kill a fire team is to target their weak members. If you have infiltrators, parachutists, or impersonators, use them strategically. Get up close to the team and try to kill off just one or two targets. Even removing one or two will greatly weaken the team, and might even make it impossible to reform if you get the right guy. So, fire teams, what else is there to say? Probably a lot. So, I want to hear your thoughts. What did I miss, and what tips do you have for new players about using fire teams? What fire teams do you want to see in the future? But until then, this is the end of the video. Subscribe for content, report for hate speech, do whatever you need. Goodbye, thanks for watching.